Need a straightforward way to record your amazing voice? Well, GarageBand is your tool. Let me show you how. So the first thing you wanna do is create a new project, either by creating a new song here or by pressing the plus sign up here at the top. Now, although tracks is already selected for me at the top of the screen, you wanna make sure that you are not in live loops, but instead in tracks. So I'll go on and do that there so you can see it. And we're going to use the audio recorder. And once, using the, once you found the audio recorder, you're going to select voice from the options below. Once in the audio recorder, you're gonna be presented with the studio version of the audio recorder. And it's gonna usually have lead vocals to begin with in the large rectangle in the center. Now, this version of the auto recorder gives you a lot of options you can choose from to control your sound and your pitch and your tone as you're recording. But sometimes you might want something simpler. So briefly, if you're wanting something simpler and really, really fast to record your voice, you can switch over to the fun settings. Now here, it tells you to point your iPad towards the sound. You click OK. And this basically toggles between some different little settings that are fun to change your voice very simply and easily. And this is where you would find the auto-tune settings if you're interested in doing that. I've also made a video about that. You can see that up in the corner if you wanna check that out sometime. But back to the studio settings, because for what we're doing today, that's gonna to be the best choice. Now, it doesn't really matter what type of audio recording you're going to do, whether it's going to be your voice singing, you're going to be reading something or narrating something. There are options here that you can choose from. So we'll start by looking at some of the different presets we have here. Right now it's set for lead vocals. That'd be somebody that's singing solo or the lead of a band. I am going to go down though and look at some of the other options. I'm actually going to be narrating a little bit or pretending to. So I'm gonna click on narrator. Now notice that the knobs here change as you change presets, okay? So your options as far as controls change, but you, you're still presented with several and it's a little bit more involved. Now I'm not gonna go into too far depth on what each one of these knobs does, but I do wanna point out that they are there. Now over to the left, you're gonna notice that there's a lot of green going up and down, and that's showing the input signal. Green is good. If you start to see yellow, you're getting a little bit too loud, and if you see red, that means you are going to clip or you're going to cause distortion in your recording. So make sure that you stay within the green and you're usually good to go. Normally the knob starts further down, but I've already moved it up in a different session to get a good level. Once all of these things are set, you wanna take a look over here on the right. Right now I have the monitor off because of the way that I'm recording this video, but what you would normally do if you wanted to hear what you sounded like through this preset of filters and settings is turn the monitor on and listen to it. So do not do that though. If you don't have headphones connected, you're gonna create feedback and it's going to be unpleasant. Up at the top, you're gonna to unclick the metronome if it's highlighted because you're not gonna want those metronome clicks during your recording. And here in the plus sign at the edge of the ruler, you wanna check something. You wanna check your sections, your song sections, and make sure it's set to automatic. We do this because if it's set to manual, it's going to stop right at whatever number of measures you selected. But if you put it on automatic, the recording is going to follow however long you record. So if you talk for 10 minutes or if you talk for two seconds, that's how long the recording will be. And you don't need to worry about measures or bars. So we're gonna go back, click out of that, and then double check our settings here with the metronome and count in. So the reason we go here is though even though we turn the metronome off, we do have the count in on, and I do wanna turn it on to no sound. So that will give me the count off, one, two, three, four, without giving me the sounds of click or wood block or whatever other sounds you might have selected. I'll go out of that. Everything else is pretty much non-explanatory or self-explanatory there. You don't really need to worry about those settings. And then last but certainly not least, you'll wanna hit the red record button at the top when you're ready to record, which will be now for us. I am testing out the audio recorder in GarageBand. I am simply gonna record a few vocal recording things and I am clearly messing this up because this is unscripted, but that's okay. The idea is to demonstrate how the audio recorder works for those of you that are wanting to see its process. Obviously, once you're done recording, you're gonna press the stop button and you'll notice that the ruler here has changed from red when we were recording to blue to show that you have something recorded. Also over here in the, the left-hand corner, 
the icon has changed, and now it's going to show rounded rectangles, letting you know that you have something recorded as well, and it's going to take you to Tracks View so you can see your recording from there. Now in Tracks View, you can see the recording of what you have, and then if you scroll over, you can see that this recording went longer than eight bars. It went into a tenth bar with a little bit of sound there. We're going to listen to a portion of it just for fun. I am testing out the audio recorder in GarageBand. I am simply going to record a few vocal recording things. And I am clearly messing this up because this is unscripted, but that's okay. The idea is to... All right, so that's recorded. Let's say you want to edit your recording. If you highlight the audio, you get these handlebars at the end and the beginning, and you can dr simply drag the recording to change where you want it to end, wherever you may happen to want that to be. The cool thing about that being, instead of cutting and editing more hardcore destructively, when you do it this way, your recording's actually not damaged or taken away. You're simply covering up the pieces that you don't wanna hear. And there you have it. That is voice or audio recording in a nutshell. If you found this video helpful, then please like and subscribe. If you haven't already, leave a comment below and share it with someone you know. It truly helps out a lot. Thanks and see you next time.